Hi, welcome to Learning Monkey. I am Raghuveer. In this class, we will discuss about the mathematics required for gradient boosting. In our last class, we had an intuition of gradient boosting and in our first classes, we discussed about gradient descent and how to calculate accuracy in regression models. So these classes will help you a lot in understanding today's class. So please follow our playlist from the beginning so that you will have a better understanding of the complete machine learning models. The link for the playlist is provided in the description below. So coming to today's class, in our last class we discussed that. So this is the data set which we worked in our last class on gradient boosting. We take the first point, so the actual value is 40. So first initially we added our prediction from our first model. The prediction value we take it as the mean value. So for all the values we are taking the mean value as the predicted value 50. So when we added the first model 50. When we added one more base model 1, what happened? We moved in the direction towards the actual value. This is what we discussed in our last class. Uh, but why we are moving in the direction of towards the actual value? That we will understand mathematically in this class. Before going into the class, first we have to understand what pseudo residual is. Uh. So coming to how we calculate accuracy in regression models. We can use many functions for calculating accuracy in regression models. One of the functions which we discussed in our previous classes is mean squared loss function. So L is equal to 1 by n, n means number of uh, number of data points. The sigma i is equal to 1 to n means number of data points, yi minus yi hat whole square, yi means actual value minus uh, predicted value whole square. This is mean squared loss. This is the loss function which we used in regression, linear regression model. So the, the same loss function we use in gradient boosting also. So this loss function, our gradient boosting uh, technique is trying to minimize this loss. Uh, okay, in this loss function, so we are not considering this 1 by n because it is a constant. Uh, Let us take L is equal to yi minus yi hat whole square. So we have to do this for all the data points. We are showing it for only one data point, but do not forget this. We have to do this for all the data points, yi minus yi hat whole square L is equal to. Let us differentiate this loss function with respect to yi hat uh, means predicted value that is equal to when we differentiate this loss function with respect to, to predicted value we got minus 2 into yi minus yi hat uh, when you substitute uh, negative sign on both the sides minus do l by do d y i hat is equal to 2 into yi minus yi hat uh, this is the one we got a negative differentiation of loss function with respect to predicted value. We got the equation 2 into yi minus yi hat. So understand this yi minus yi hat this is the residual value which we calculated in our last class in gradient boosting 40 minus 50 minus 10 residual value. So we are getting residual value. How we are getting the residual value? By differentiating our loss function with respect to predicted value, we are getting the residual value, but not exact residual value. Approximately, we are getting an extra constant. Uh, with this constant, we do not get affected. That is why we are accepting it as, as a approximate residual. That is why we call this as pseudo residual. Instead of calculating residual, you can substitute this do, dl by dyi hat, uh, negative sign of, uh, we can take it as the residual value. That is why we call it as pseudo residual. So instead of calculating residual, we can place this equation. This point is important to understand. We use this concept in our mathematics. Okay. So first refresh the concept of gradient descent, then we will understand the mathematics required for gradient boosting. So what we done in gradient descent, uh, let us take an equation z is equal to 2x plus 5y minus 1 whole square. This is an equation in three dimensional coordinate system and it looks like a parabola in three dimensional coordinate system. So the equation looks like this. Uh, so forget about uh, the diagram if it is wrong, uh, the equation looks like a parabola in three dimensional coordinate system. So what we are doing in uh, gradient descent is uh, 
at what value of x and y we are having minimum z value this is the point where we had the minimum z value so at what value of x and y we are having minimum z that we are identifying here in gradient descent how we are identifying initially allot some values to x and y x is equal to 5 and x is equal to 6 so we substitute in this equation x new is equal to x old what's the first value 5 minus alpha means learning rate alpha into differentiate z partial differentiate z with respect to x and substitute x old and x y old values at x is equal to 5 comma 5 we are calculating the slope if the slope is positive means at x is equal to 5 and y is equal to 6 it's moving upwards but we have to move downwards because the minimum point is here that's why we are subtracting the x value this value with the previous x value because we are moving downwards we have to move downwards the same way if it is negative that's why the equation is minus if it is positive minus with the old value if it is negative means the slope is moving towards the minimum point so add add the point minus into minus we'll get plus so this is what we have done in gradient descent the, here the important point is dou z by dou x and dou z by dou y so what is these values these are the slope values when we differentiate the equation z with the x and y so dou z by dou x if you write it as a vector the values this vector we call it as a direction vector why we are calling it as a direction vector these values are helping us in moving towards the minimum z value if it is positive negate if it is negative add so this that's why we call it as direction vector this is very very important point to understand we call this vector as direction vector because why the values are helping us in moving towards the minimum z value okay so now coming to our actual gradient boosting this is the example which we used initially we have considered the mean value as our predicted value the same thing we have done in the gradient descent initially some random values the same way first model prediction is the mean value initially you select some value we selected it as a mean value so first model prediction plus what we have done in our last class this equation all these equations are clearly explained in our last class based on the assumption you already know all these equations we are moving forward so alpha into if you add one more model base model one prediction is added each time next if you add one more model so this total value is added to our next model prediction this is what we are doing here the recurrent equation for this is written as a y hat m is equal to mth model is equal to so predicted value of m minus 1 plus alpha into d do delta m means the mth model mth model prediction so here mth model is working on the residual values of previous model so the base model 1 here working on the residual values of previous model so in place of residual values we can substitute pseudo residual that's why the equation y hat m is equal to y hat m minus 1 plus alpha into negative derivative of loss function with respect to y i hat m minus 1 we have to do this for all the values don't forget that we are showing it for one value we have to do it this for all the values so previous model residual values our, our present model is working on previous model residual values see here if the minus value is taken out y hat m is equal to y hat m minus 1 minus alpha into dou l by dou dl by d uh, differentiation of y hat, yi hat m minus 1 to model m minus 1 to model this equation exactly looks like gradient descent equation so what is this dl by dy hat residual uh, residual values uh, so our present model is working on the residual values of previous models so why we got that uh, how we got that residual values uh, this is our l so this l exactly looks like this equation similar to this equation l is equal to yi minus yi hat whole square z is equal to 2 
when we differentiate this z with respect to x the value which we got here is helping us in moving towards the direction of minimum z the same way when we differentiate this l with respect to y i hat the value we get here will help you in moving towards the direction of a minimum l minimum loss means moving towards the direction of actual value we calculate this this is this is what we call it a pseudo residual right our model is working on pseudo residual values if you made it as a vector pseudo residual values as a vector this is the direction vector the same like this uh, helping us in moving towards the direction of actual values so our present model is working on the direction vector values that's why the predicted values of the present model are helping us in moving towards the direction towards the actual value here we will substitute the predicted values of present model present model is working on the residual values of previous model what's this residual values direction vector towards the minimum loss minimum loss means we are going near to the actual value that's the mathematics we have to understand in our next class we will discuss about the algorithm of uh, gradient boosting so for that uh, this mathematics why we are moving towards in our next class we don't discuss all these equations we just simply explain the algorithm uh, hoping that you already know watch all these classes hope you understand the concept if you have any questions regarding the concept please post your questions in the comment section below thanks for watching if you haven't subscribed to our channel please subscribe to our channel and press bell icon for the latest updates thank you